Don't you know it's not enough to sit around? Don't you know the time has come to get it on? Ray Statement's Body Life book was such a groundbreaking book, such a groundbreaking. I think it laid down the foundation for the so-called five-fold ministry, although there are abuses in some applications of that. Ray's love for the hippies and eventually for the Jesus people was contagious. Now, something humorous. There was such a legalism in the church and such an insistence on men cutting their hair short and not wearing beards and you name it, that there is a a college, a Christian college, I will not name it, but it's in Oregon, not too far from where we live. And there was this big issue, you know, because the people were not accepting the demands that they should shave and cut their hair. So they call an assembly, and the president makes the pitch. And what he didn't realize is that behind him on the wall was a picture of the founder of the college. And the student says, how do you put together what you just said with that picture on the wall? Because that guy who was in the 1800s had a long beard and long hair anyway. But back to the hippies. Here we are in Oregon. We finished the first semester of the graduate course, and we are getting ready for the summer. And we had the choice. Do we come back to Palo Alto and do an internship with Ray, which appealed to us, or do we hang around Oregon and minister to the hippies and to the migrant workers? And so we pray about it with Ruth, and we said, no, let's stay here. And so they assign us to a church, a very crunchy church, very conservative, two churches, actually. And they were intrigued by us, you know. We are Latin Americans. I'm an evangelist. My brother-in-law is Luis Palau, so I cannot be that weird. But this guy is a little bit more effusive and so forth. But we struck a very good friendship with the pastors, and they asked me, the questions that they didn't dare, they ask anybody, you know, about power encounters and Holy Spirit baptism and this and that. I am not a theologian, much less back then, but I shared experiences that were undeniable. And also, when I was at Multnomah, the faculty ran into a wall because a girl who was the daughter of a very prestigious board member, all of a sudden manifested herself as demonized. And the school didn't know what to do with it because one of the professors says, oh, no, those are just psychological illnesses. They never happen. And now they have a girl that they cannot reject because belongs to one of the influential families. And, and I'm a shy guy deep down, and I didn't want to say anything, but somebody told the president, Dr. Aldrich Sr., about this guy from Argentina that has some experience with deliverance. And, uh, and so they called me in, and I helped them. I gave them a few pointers. The girl was restored. She was set free and so forth. So that made the rounds into the crunchy circles there. And in fact, about five years later, Dr. Aldrich and Dr. John Mitchell, that was the founder of the school, took us out to lunch to tell us how now the school has a deliverance ministry and so forth. 